A strange story happened in the rather large Brazilian city of Goiânia in 1987. It began with the relocation of a private radiotherapy clinic. During the move, a legal dispute arose with the Societe St. Vincent Delaware Paul, the owner of the land where the clinic had been located. During the legal dispute, the Society of St. Vincent prohibited entry to the building, and it was taken into protective custody. One police officer was present as a guard, apparently negligent in his duties. One day on September 13, 1987, a group of marauders broke into the building and stole items they considered to be of value. Among the items stolen was a piece of equipment for radiotherapy containing the radioactive isotope cesium-137. Radioactive isotopes have a very narrow use in medicine, where they are used both in the diagnosis of disease and in treatment. The most widely used is radiation therapy, in which a concentrated dose of radiation is directed at a malignant tumor or group of cancerous cells in order to destroy them. Sometimes tiny doses of radioactive materials called labeled atoms are injected into a patient's bloodstream, and the gamma rays they emit help a special camera create images of the inside of the patient's body. Hospitals and clinics that perform such procedures have strict protocols about how these devices should be handled. When such a hospital or facility closes and must be demolished, the contracting company is informed that the devices must be carefully dismantled and the hazardous materials moved to a safe location. Failure to do so can lead to tragedy. A similar incident occurred in the Brazilian city of Goiânia in 1987. Two years before the incident, a private radiotherapy institute in Goiânia had moved to new premises, leaving behind many old medical devices and supplies. Among them was a remote radiation therapy machine that contained 93 grams of highly radioactive cesium chloride, salt of cesium-137, a radioactive isotope with a half-life of 30 years. The salt was encased in a shielded container of lead and steel. At the time, the Radiation Therapy Institute and the owners of the facility were in litigation over ownership of the abandoned site, so the court forbade any items from the facility by any party until a decision was made. The owners of the institute wrote to the National Atomic Energy Commission CNEN, warning them of the dangers of storing the remote radiation therapy machine at the abandoned site. The court assigned guards to the site but that was not enough to stop the scrap metal hunters. On September 13, 1987, taking advantage of the guards' absence from work, Roberto dos Santos Alves and Wagner Moda, Pereira broke into the partially destroyed facility and stole a radioactive source, thinking that the shiny stainless steel object might be very valuable. They then went to Alves's house, where they began disassembling the apparatus. That same evening, Alves and Pereira began vomiting horribly, they thought they had eaten something wrong. The next day Pereira had diarrhea and dizziness, and his left arm began to swell. He also developed a burn on his arm the same size and shape as the hole in the radioactive device. Pereira went to a local clinic, but the doctors, not knowing anything about the signs of radioactive poisoning, considered his condition an allergic reaction and simply recommended that he rest. Alves, who was in better condition at the time, continued to work on disassembling the machine, determined to see it through. He managed to poke a hole in the protective casing with a screwdriver and scooped up some cesium. Thinking it was gunpowder, he tried to light it, but it didn't burn. Alves' persistence paid off, and six days after the theft, he finally managed to remove the wheel from the case. That same day, he took the source to a nearby junkyard. That night, Dever Alves Ferreira, owner of the junkyard, walked into the garage where the pieces of the machine were stacked and noticed a blue glow emanating from the capsule. This glow was caused by radiation that ionized air molecules. Ferreira decided to take the source into the house to show it to his family. Within three days, almost all of Ferreira's neighbors, relatives and friends had visited him to see the miraculous light-emitting capsule. Ferreira also gave some pellets of the luminous material to his friends and relatives. 
some rub them into their skin instead of decorative glitter. On September 21, Ferreira's 37-year-old wife developed diarrhea and vomiting. She went to the hospital but, like Pereira, was told she was having an allergic reaction to some product and was sent home to rest. Meanwhile, Devere Ferreira took some of the scrap metal to a second landfill. By then, many of the people in contact with the source felt an incomprehensible malaise. Ferreira's wife, Gabriela Maria Ferreira, thought the glowing powder was the cause. She went to the second dump where her husband had taken the capsule and convinced the owner to give her the rest. She then took it in a bag to the hospital and placed it on the table in front of the doctors, saying that the stuff was killing her family. The doctors decided to take the bag out of the hospital building and leave it in the backyard. Chronology of Events Gabriela Maria Ferreira was initially diagnosed with some kind of tropical disease, but one of the doctors saw skin lesions and realized they were caused by radiation. After that, a lot of people went to the hospital and realized the seriousness of the situation. The Goiania authorities brought in police, fire and civil defense forces, and a temporary survey camp was set up on the grounds of the Olympic Stadium. Approximately 250 people were found to have significant amounts of radioactive material inside or on their bodies. At least 20 showed signs of radiation sickness and needed treatment. Four people died as a result of the incident in Goiânia. Devair Ferreira's wife, two of his employees, and his six-year-old niece, Lay Das Neves Ferreira, who was sitting on the floor eating pieces of cesium-137 along with her sandwich. All suffered organ damage, internal bleeding, hair loss and external scarring. Roberto dos Santos Alves and Wagner Mota Pereira, the ones who stole the radioactive source, miraculously survived, but they lost their hands. Their fate is unknown. Devere Ferreira, too, survived despite receiving a near-fatal dose of radiation. He died in 1994 of cirrhosis of the liver, aggravated by depression and binge drinking. The situation stirred up the entire international community. After the incident, the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, introduced strict international safety standards for radioactive sources and Brazil adopted a system to trace the entire life cycle of every radioactive source from its creation to its disposal. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.